good news, I am finally back at the gym. Bad news, still shut. Walking the pup, come. Today is day one of my couch to ultramarathon training program. Uh, it's also a day where I find out if all the subs I picked up from Christmas onwards with all my Zwift videos stick around now that I'm in the great outdoors again. Those guys do love being inside with the cartoon cyclist. Hopefully they will. The message is the same. Be above average, set targets, hit them. All the best movies are from the 80s. Yeah, that's right. A lot of them seem to subscribe when I fell off my bike, so. Maybe I just run into a tree occasionally to keep them hooked. But you never know. I guess they might just recoil in horror from the sight of fresh air, like a, a blade vampire. That's not 80s, but you get the idea. So today's plan is to get Lincoln home and then I'm running today. And it's supposed to be, although it is still just February, a really nice day. Uh, the sun's gonna be out, blue skies apparently, which will be great, be a nice change. There will be, hopefully, not a computer generated cloud in the sky. Now, if you are a Zwifter thinking, what is this ridiculous stereotype that we never go beyond our big screens in our pain caves, like some sort of lycra clad computer hackers, it's just jokes. Wait till you hear how I describe ultra runners. Now to say couch to ultra marathon is a little bit clickbaity because obviously my running ability right now is beyond the couch and a 50 kilometer run is the baby of ultra marathons. So to elaborate a bit, my running ability, first of all, 2019, I ran three 50 kilometer runs. I should add that before 2019, I was almost exclusively park run distance only. Now, the first two of those 50K runs were dead flat, took me five and a half hours each one and bored me stupid. The third one at the end of 2019 was amazing. It had almost four and a half thousand feet of climbing. It was the Hurtwood 50K. I had a target of six hours that I missed by two minutes, but I loved every second of it. I immediately signed up to do their 2020 event and try and get a sub six hour time, but then coronavirus happened. So that basically resulted in me getting the bike. That sent me down an Ironman rabbit hole. So I ended up doing lots of Ironman training. That meant lots of flat marathon running distance at most. Then the Ironman got cancelled. We didn't get cancelled, but I cancelled it in my head because they're probably going to cancel it. And then the Hurtwood 50 got cancelled anyway and moved to January. And then it got re-cancelled and moved to April, which is now probably going ahead but because I'd stopped running because I thought the Ironman, it got very complicated. Bottom line, I can run clearly based on what I was doing last year, but I have not run decent distance since I gave up mentally, at least, on the Ironman in December of last year. My weight is up from 220 to about 230 at least. I've not done any hill work at all since, probably since 2019. Am I on the couch? No, but am I ultra marathon ready? Not by a long shot. As for the run itself, yes, 50 kilometers is the smallest of ultra marathons, about 31 miles. But as far as I'm concerned, it has got more elevation than running up Mount Snowden. And there'll be lots of people there with beards and eating vegan flapjacks. So as far as I'm concerned, it's an ultra marathon. And it is a good one. 99% of it is off road. It's through some amazing woods. There's great views, lovely scenery. The people are great. The route is an out and back, but it's got a loop at the end. So there's no actual turnaround point. And to be honest, the terrain is so varied that on the way back, it feels like you're running a completely different race anyway. Will it actually happen? It's been rescheduled three times for coronavirus already. I'm not even gonna contemplate that. I will address those concerns nearer the time if they become more relevant. They have said, if it doesn't happen now, they will cancel it completely for this year, so. So my training that I'll be documenting over the next six weeks has got four key aspects to it, and in future videos, I'll elaborate more on each part. To summarize them now though, Number one is running, number two is weight loss, number three is technique and equipment, and number four is just lifestyle. Number one, running. I've just gotta get some running in. At peak Ironman training, I was running at least four times a week. They were long sessions, often just jumping straight off the bike and out the door. It was tough stuff. Right now, just going out and doing a 10K feels like a slog. Now, the nice thing about an ultra marathon is that if you can run 10K, you can eventually and slowly run 50K. 
but I want to do two things on this run. Number one, I want to get under six hours, so I have a time target. And I also want to do it with enough fitness that I can recover from it quite promptly, because the week after the ultramarathon, I've just signed up for the Beast of Beacons 20 mile mountain race, which I did last year with, with Nixon. Nixon was fastest dog last year. We're gonna go back and try and retain our title, his title. And if I let him down by being in terrible shape from the week before, he will feel very hard done by, I'll feel very guilty, and the whole thing will be a disaster. So here's what I did. I downloaded off the internet a plan called Couch to 50K, which sounded absolutely perfect. It's 12 weeks long, not quite so perfect. I'll cut off the first six weeks, just do the last six weeks, and then go off and do the race. Perfect. Um, in fact, I'm actually going to go and do the first run from the program today, which is technically the very last day of week six. It's 10 miles easy. The dog is ready. I'm going to go get that done and then get back and run through the rest of it in a bit more detail. That was so nice out there. Great to finally see the sunshine again. Nixon pulling like a little train the whole way. He's only got seven weeks till the Beast of Beacons race, so he's going to be coming on all my training runs with me. In an ideal world, he'd come and do the 50K with me as well, but they don't allow dogs. So this training program, let's go through it from the top. Over the next six weeks, Monday, every day, is a rest day. Tuesday, every day, is an 8K easy run day. Wednesday is most of the time a 6K with speed work run, but there's a rest week on week two and an easy week in the final week, week six. Thursday, that's a mix of 6K easies and some rest days. Friday, always a rest day. Saturday, always a long run. And Sunday, always a medium long run done easy. Will it work? Not a clue. Next up is weight loss, and this is an easy one. I'm too heavy. At least I'm too heavy to run it comfortably, and I'm definitely too heavy to run it confident that I won't come off the back of it with an injury, or at least a very slow recovery that will screw up the race the following week. So I need to drop some weight. Now, something I hear quite a bit is people saying, well, of course you can't run those sort of distances, you're six foot six. This has nothing to do with being six foot six. This is to do with being the right weight for six foot six. I'm a huge believer that 99.9% .9 of people, no matter what their size, can run as long as their weight is correct for how heavy they should be. I'm explaining this very badly. Here's the way I think of it. Cave weight. Cave weight, like most of my ideas, is completely made up and it exists only as something I can grab onto as a motivator, irrespective of any of its foundations being based on science. That said, let me explain it. If, as a baby, I was transported back in time, way further than that, thousands of years, and then grew up in a cave, eating, exercising, naturally, where any predisposition, be it genetic, psychological, or just made up, to carrying excess body fat, would be countered by the fact that there was no McDonald's, what weight would I be? That is my cave weight. Now I have some flexibility with that concept because I am probably carrying more lean weight than if I lived in a cave because of all sorts of modern things like the availability of good quality protein and modern training techniques and so on. But also, I'd have died from an asthma attack at the age of seven in a cave, so flexibility is fine. But what I do need to do is get down from where I am now, around 230 to around 215, 220 at tops. Ideal weight for that sort of distance is probably closer to 205, 210 for me but I can't get down that low that quick. This way I can drop just over two pounds a week and still get my training in. Two pounds a week and training sounds like quite a big drop, but as a percentage of my weight, it's not huge, perfectly achievable. How? Simple, I'm gonna eat less. I've got a very simple meal plan that's 2,000 calories a day that ticks two important boxes for me. One is it gives me enough protein between 1.5 and 1.75 grams per kilogram of body weight to maintain the size that I want to maintain going into the race, and it also gives me enough calories to stay alive. If I need more calories, dependent upon what I'm doing, I can then easily add to it. So if I'm having a long run day, I can just stick in some more carbs. If I'm feeling particularly tired, more carbs, hungry, more fats. It's as simple as that. So number three, now technique and equipment. This is just about being ready for the specifics of running a 50K race. 
it is a distance that I'm not used to running. For me, my bread and butter run is doing a 10K at something like a four minute 30 pace. That is a run I can go off and do, and it's quite comfortable. I do it all the time. Now clearly 50K, six hours is a very different pace, and it's not quite as simple to work out that pace as taking the six hours and the 50K and coming up with a number, because a lot of the run will be done at different rates. There'll be sections where I power walk up the steeper hills. I might have to go slowly on the descents. I might have to go slowly through muddy, wet sections. I'll be stopping occasionally at the aid stations to refill my water. It is a varied pace throughout. So it's not quite as simple as saying it's as slow as six hours, 50K, but it is a slow pace. And that needs practicing because I find that running an unusual pace can lead to all sorts of problems. For example, last year I ran the London Virtual Marathon. Actually, I ran it with my brother. I was supporting him. He was doing it properly. And by support, I mean flying the drone around his head and annoying him. Now, the pace there was much, much slower than I'm used to. And I had the worst post-run pain and slowest recovery from a run I'd had in years, literally years. I had sore Achilles. I had sore calves. My knees hurt. My feet felt crushed. I was an absolute mess. I don't know enough to know exactly why that is, but my assumption would be that the alteration in pace to a slower pace meant a change in cadence, a change in my stride, my technique, my gait, and it basically exposed new muscles to stimulation that they weren't used to over a long period of time, and I came up lacking. So I need to make these slow training runs slow, so I am used to that pace. And I also need to test out the gear I'm gonna be running in. The run is supported, there are aid tables, but I don't like to be too heavily reliant on those. I wanna be able to carry my own water, my own food, any equipment I might need, uh, lubricant if things start to rub, uh, I'm gonna carry my camera, obviously, my phone, bits and pieces. What I don't want is 20K, 30K in to find that my running vest is starting to rub or my water bottles are jiggling about annoyingly. I wanna make sure all of those things are ironed out now and not halfway around the woods. And number four is life. I wanna keep doing the things that I need to do and want to do on top. That means work, it means the kids, it means family time, it means the dogs, it means getting out on the bicycle proper. Now the weather's nice, it means jumping on the bike in here and doing some Zwift races. And it definitely means as much as I can in here, lifting still. I want to carry on moving some weight around so I maintain a look and aesthetic that I am happy with. My objective is to run an ultramarathon, not particularly look like I run an ultramarathon. Worst case scenario, I'm about to start buying extra small t-shirts or something. So that is the next six weeks planned out. And I'll be elaborating on all the bits and pieces that are going into that training in future videos. Please like and subscribe to follow along with those. We are racing towards 10,000 subs, which is amazing. And that is not the only videos. There'll be plenty of other stuff as well. And I might even squeeze in the occasional cartoon cyclist just to keep the Zwift boys happy. And if that doesn't work, I'll just drop in some clips that I know you all love anyway.